Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Colin, call sign MM0PX. Just wanted to do a short video uh, on a little cable assembly uh, I need to make. So when I purchased my um, ICOM IC705, I needed to get away um, from connecting an uh, antenna with a PL259 connection to the BNC connection. Now the catch was I wanted to use my 705 inside a go box, so it wasn't just as easy as putting um, an adapter on it. Um, so what I actually came up with at the same time when I ordered the 705, I ordered um, a few meters of RG58. Yes, it's a lossy cable, but for this length, it's nothing. So I so I got the connectors, um, got the coax. I made it up, worked great, no no issues, with the exception of that the cable is just far too stiff. Normally, um, RG58 is quite flexible, but this stuff is really, really good RG58. Um, I'm really impressed with it. But for a patch cable, it's just a little bit um, a little bit too stiff. And when I have it on the side of my 705, if you're moving the cable, you're then putting strain on the BNC connector, uh, the mail on the, uh, the radio, and I don't want that. So I thought what I thought I would do is I need to make this lighter. So what I'm going to use is... Going to use some of these um, little crimp socket uh, connections. So I have one on an AC, SO239 and I have a 90, de 90 degree BNC connector. So that's what I'm going to use. And um, for coax, what I'm going to use is this stuff. And I've never worked with this before. This is RG316. I'll put um, a link um, to all these parts in this, the description. So I found a company here in the UK, Wi Fi antennas, but I think they're part of a bigger group. And really impressed with their um, um, with the prices and the quality of the products. And my new tool, which you'll see a bit later on, is this. So this is the crimp connector. I was kind of hesitant to buy one of these because I'd seen the price of them usually between twenty five and thirty pounds. Well, again, this was fifteen pounds. So that's a new tool for me. So um, let's go and figure things out and uh, make this cable assembly up. So this is what I want to uh, replicate. So this is actually, um, it's really good components, it's really well made, but you can see that the flexibility of this coax is just, it's just not where I want it to be. Um, I've used lots of uh, RG58 in the past, um, and it's been nice and flexible, but this stuff, now this was this was bought from um, Man Lynch and Sons, and there's nothing wrong with the coax, it's just very, very stiff. Um, so if you're running a short run to a, an antenna, it would be absolutely fine, so I'm not even sure of the brand. Um, I assumed I was buying Messi and Poloni, it may be that, but it's not stamp Messi and Poloni, so I don't think it is. Um, so I want to make this, um, but in something more lightweight and a lot more flexible. So what I have is this RG316 coax. Now I've never used this before. And similar connectors as used before, so this is a um, right angle, 90 degree um, BNC um, uh, compression fitting, we call them compression. Um, so this is a new one for me, and obviously on the other end, you can see, you see the difference. So um, <clears throat> it's going to be a good bit lighter as well. But really, the main thing for me is the, the flexibility to get. And the new tool that I've got is this. So I'm, I'm pleased that I've actually got this. I've been eyeing up these for a while. Um, so these are obviously to compress the um, ferrules on the ends. And this was very reasonable. This was um, fifteen pounds. And this will um, this will do RG174316 and RG58, if I believe correctly. But now I've got the tool, you know, it's a one-off cost, I've got it. Um, so I think for all the parts that I've purchased, I think it was um, just over £30. Pounds. Now it's going to make me, that will that would make me four of these cables up. Um, and if I was to buy these, to buy these commercially, I'd be struggling to buy as well-made um, patch leads. And hence why I'm making my own, and then I have the tool forevermore. Uh, if I need it. So, we want to cut our coax first. So what we're just going to do is, because this is the patch lead I've been using on my 705, I know the length is correct. There we go, just cut that. Just make sure that it's uh, still recording okay. Yep. Okay, so what do I need to do first, because this is a new one for me. Um, guess we'll look at our fittings. So for this one, if you can see this, the um, centre conductor needs to go through here 
and I'll need to get soldered on. This was similar to the other fitting that I had, although it was a compression, a compression fitting. Um, so I need to do that, so I guess I need to strip that back somewhat. Um, and also I've seen getting used as adhesive line heat shrink, so I'm going to cut a couple of bits of that and see how much I need. So let me do two bits like that. I need to order more of this. So that's my heat shrink. And I don't want to forget the ferrules, so I don't want to, to uh, clamp it on and then um, crush it on and then forget to put the ferrules on. I hope I don't forget. Right, so what am I doing here? Okay, let's have a look at this first, this B and C end. So I guess I need to... Before I get started here, this blade has been a bit blunt. So these um, Stanley blades, I think they're called them box cutters in the States. It's a ten a penny. So uh, I don't mind using, don't mind using the new one. Keep them nice and sharp. There we go. So I need to strip this back somewhat. So, take a rough measurement with my thumb and mark it. Doesn't matter if it's a little bit much because I can trim it back. Don't want to cut through. I don't want to cut through the braid. Ah, I've cut through the braid. What I'll do is. Just snip that off and we'll do that again. Not as much pressure on it this time. Yep, that's better. So, just line this up with here. I think that's going to be right. So, the way I understand it is so the center conductor goes through the middle with the dielectric, obviously, and then the braid go around this little knurled part here and then that's what I need to uh, clamp on with the tool um, okay so I need to I need to strip this back so I'm going to need to cut this braid I guess Back to there. I'll just do this over the form instead of over the table. Excuse it. Let's try that. Okay, that doesn't look bad at all. And the line patch looks alright. So then I just need to strip the point off. Yeah, right. Trim a little bit more. I guess I need to thread this through here. Yep, so I've cut the braid, I think, if, you, if this is focusing on just focusing. Just right, I'll come up and check. There you go. So the braid's over this little knurled part and you can see the center conductor where it should be. So now what I'll actually do I think is, I'm not sure whether you should solder that in place first, but I'm going to crimp that first. Where's the little ferrule? So what you get is a ferrule and then you get a little screw end cap to seal it up. Okay, so I can thread this on this end because I'm not sealed it up yet. Push straight up there. Okay. 
I wasn't quite happy where that centre conductor was. It's a little bit tight to go on that ferrule, I'll just give it a little encouragement. I think that'll be alright. Again, this is a new one for me. I'll trim that bit of red later. So what I'll do is, get the tool. So which one is it? Obviously the smaller one. Crush it. There we go. All the way. Okay, so that's actually put it, made it into a nice little hexagon shape. See that? So we need to solder our middle conductor. Well, I'm here, I'll just check with the multimeter, Sandy, just to check if there's no, no um, short. Okay, it's alright so far. Right, we'll start off. Put the same cap on. Oops. Um, spanner. I had a spanner looked out for this somewhere. Just for the camera so you can see. Go. That's one end almost complete, so I don't want to forget our heat shrink. So we'll put that on, and all I'll do is I'll just actually use this, this, this gun. Use this wherever I can. This um, this heat shrink. Okay, I'm turn that off for a minute. Okay, so there, there we go. So that's one end on. So that'll go solid when this um, blue line heat shrink dries. This will be solid. Yeah, get some strap a bit later. So that's one end done. Now. What I want to do first here is I want to put on the heat shrink and I want to put on the ferrule so I don't forget. Right, and this one, so it's quite similar again. So the little gold bit in there that's the center conductor. Okay.
Get our multimeter. Okay, the shields are connected all right. Let's check the center conductors. Good. So that's going to work. And look how much flex. Look how flexible that is with this 316 over this. I'll still keep this, but uh, I was just worried about the strain. You know, if you're pushing the cable, it's putting strain on the BNC. Where this, you just don't get that. The the, 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 uh, the cable flexes you could really feel the difference. And you have a, a cable assembly that's probably as good as you're ever going to get. These um these connectors, I buy these from M Zero M E T Mat, M Three Z Bay Shop. Um, and these are all um, PTFE dielectric and gold plated contacts. They're first class con uh, first class um, connectors, um, and they're very reasonably priced. And we'll just trim off some of these straggly bits. But yeah, leave some comments. Um, this is a this is a new technique for me, but I think I'll certainly use it again. I do like um, compression fittings and all coax runs. Um, I do favour these. As you can see, this is on um, Ultra Flex Seven on Messi and Peloni. Um But the, these are good, and obviously they're watertight. Um, you probably don't get so much. There is still areas where you could get um, moisture into, but I, I don't use them in wet areas. Okay, so that's our um, finished assembly. Um, if you like my stuff, please um, please give it please give the video a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, that would be much appreciated um, if you do so. And until the next video, we'll see you then.